When I first moved to the US, I knew that a lot of things would be different. Different food, more small talk, bigger homes. But one thing I wasn't aware of at all was that even dogs and their owners were living quite a different life over here. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Feli. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. And for most of my time here in the US, I've lived in apartments or houses with roommates. And I've had a lot of roommates over the years, some of which looked like this. I think I lived with three dogs in total at different points in time. Well, of course, I had three roommates that had dogs. And that was actually the first thing that really surprised me, how many college students in their late teens, early 20s had a dog here. That was not something I was used to from Germany. But we'll get back to that later because that was only one of many differences regarding dogs in Germany compared to the US that I would have never expected. Let's start out by looking at how common dogs are in the two countries. I looked at the numbers and it turns out that the US actually has just as many dogs, if not more, as Germany has people. 84 to 90 million pet dogs were estimated to live in the US in 2020. For comparison, Germany has about 84 million people. This makes dogs the number one most popular pet in the US before cats, with 44.5% of all US households having at least one dog. That's 65 million households and almost half of the country. In Germany, dogs are also extremely popular, but they're not quite as common as cats. While Germany is home to about 15 million cats, there are only 10 and a half million dogs that live in about 21% of households. So about one in five German households has one or several dogs, which is significantly lower than in the US. But if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Germany is a lot more densely populated than the US, meaning that there's generally less space per person. And especially in German cities, most people live in relatively small apartments, at least for American standards, that often don't provide enough space for a dog or don't even allow dogs to begin with. In the US, it's a lot more common to live in houses with yards, or they even have their own land, which makes having a dog just a lot easier. In terms of the most popular breeds, for the first time in 31 years, the French Bulldog actually kicked the Labrador off first place in the US, and they're followed by Golden Retrievers, German Shepherd Dogs, and Poodles. In Germany, the number one in 2022 was listed as crossbreeds. Not sure if that option was even considered on the American list. Then Labrador, German Shepherd, Shepherd, French Bulldog, and Chihuahua. So pretty similar, actually. But as I said, these dogs seem to be living quite a different life in the two countries. While in the US, there's probably more dogs who get to live on farms and homes with big yards to run around in, German dogs get to participate in public life more. That's something that you'll notice even if you're just visiting Germany. Dogs are kind of everywhere. In parks, at lakes, at beer gardens, cafes, restaurants, even indoors, at stores, at malls, on public transportation, you name it. Well, there are a few exceptions, of course. They're not allowed into supermarkets, drugstores, or pharmacies, for example, but you often just see them tied up outside while their owner is in the store. And if stores or restaurants decide not to allow dogs in, they usually put up a sign that says, wir müssen draußen bleiben. Many companies these days also allow their employees to bring their dogs into the office. And I actually asked you guys on Instagram to send me photos of your dogs out and about in Germany, and I got a lot of adorable pictures and some of you also shared your experiences. So here's what you guys sent, and this might also be a little mood boost in case you need one today. Compared to Greece, Germany is a pet heaven. Just to give you an example, I remember the driver of a train in Athens saying over the speaker, the lady with the dog, please disembark. It's not allowed without a transport box. It's the complete opposite to how many pets you might see every day in public transport and other places in Berlin. I lived in Berlin for several years in the early 80s and got a dog from the Tierheim. Best thing was how easy it was to take him with us on outings, to restaurants, etc. Unheard of in the US at the time and still very rare. The staff also immediately brings out water for your dog, especially on hot days. The only thing I think is missing are dog parks, which you find often in big cities in the US. I live in Munich, but I am French. 
My rule is, I take my dog everywhere I can slash am allowed to, as long as he will be comfortable. He used to come to work with me when it was allowed. I take him to restaurants, beer gardens, in the public transportation, on hikes, on runs, to the supermarket where he waits for me outside because it's safe. I often travel to France by train so he can come with me. This is only possible because he is super well behaved and this is something I notice in Germany. People train their dogs and it's great. Dogs here are happy, friendly and welcome pretty much everywhere. That's actually something that I read a lot when I researched this. Apparently, compared to many other countries, Germans take dog training very seriously. But I guess it's kind of necessary if you want to take your dog out in public everywhere. And people also expect dogs to be trained in Germany, as you can hear in this NPR report. The thing is, as Richo explains, your fellow citizens actually expect you to have a well-behaved dog in Germany. Total strangers will comment on his dog's behavior. Lauren Taranu, an American expat in the class, says this is reflective of a larger trend in Germany. People will also correct you if you jaywalk or talk in the quiet car on the train. To us, it seems very strange. I think it's Americans because you don't really reprimand strangers, right? <laughs> but it's kind of like this, you know, if you all do your part, then we have a nicer community <laughs> as a whole. A lot of people actually go to so-called Hundeschulen, dog schools, for two to three months, where they not only train their dog, but also learn a lot themselves about interacting with the dog. These do exist in the US as well, under the name Dog Obedience Class, but I'm not sure how many dog owners attend those. Maybe you could let me know in the comments below if you know more about that. Now, of course, it's not like in the US, dogs don't participate in public life at all, but dog owners are definitely definitely more restricted as to where they can and can't bring their furry friends. The general rule is that dogs can't usually go inside any public buildings unless they're service dogs or the place explicitly allows it. Hardware stores like Home Depot or Lowe's are dog friendly, for example, or of course pet stores. When it comes to dining, while you can't bring your dog to an indoor restaurant, 23 out of 50 US states do actually allow dogs in outdoor seating areas of a restaurant, and even the FDA updated their guidance last year saying that it is okay in outdoor dining areas if state and local laws and the restaurant allow it. If you want to take your dog onto the bus or subway in the US though, if you live in a city that actually has public transportation, your dog will have to be in a container, like you can see it here on the subway in New York. Dogs also generally have to be on a leash when they're in public in the US. The laws vary depending on your state and city, but there aren't a lot of exceptions besides dog parks, which are fenced off areas inside a park that are specifically dedicated to dogs. I personally have to agree with the comment from earlier saying that dog parks are missing in Germany because I don't remember ever seeing a fenced off area like that in Munich. But I guess you don't really need it because you can actually take your dog off the leash in a lot of parks. And one thing that most parks in Munich do have are Hundewiesen, dog meadows, where dogs are allowed to be unleashed and run around. If you live in Berlin or Lower Saxony, you do need to be careful though because in those two states you need to obtain a dog license before you're allowed to unleash your dog. So you actually have to take a test. In the US, at least based on my observations, even in parks, you're not usually allowed to take your dog off the leash. As a result of all of this, a lot of people in the US actually have to leave their dogs at home a lot of the time when they're at work, but even after work when they run errands or meet up with friends. That's why a lot of Americans set up indoor cameras that connect to their smartphones so that they can keep an eye on their dogs even when they're not home, such as the indoor cameras by Lidocam. Shout out to them for sponsoring this video. Ben and I don't have a dog, but we do have cats and we have two of the little cam C1 cameras in our house, one in the kitchen and one in the living room so that we can see what the cats are up to when we're gone and if everything is okay. But it also just gives us peace of mind in terms of security, especially when we're in Europe for a few weeks at a time and we have people come to the house to look after the cats. We can see who goes in and out even from thousands of miles away because it's all in the app on our phones. We can watch the live footage and control all of the settings on there. We can set motion detection alerts, pick whether it should notify us about human movements or not. We can set the sensitivity and the alert area. So if you don't want to be notified about your pets simply walking around, but you do want to know when they're on the couch, for example, you can specifically select that part of the frame. And one of the coolest features that especially comes in handy for dog owners is that it has a two-way audio system, meaning you can actually talk through the camera. So even when you're away, you can communicate with your dog, like you could give commands or calm them down if they're stressed. What's that sound? 
And since the camera also has a mic, you can hear what's going on in your home and even activate sound detection. The camera can record 24 seven to local storage or to a cloud. It provides a really clear picture with full HD 1080p resolution. And it even has night vision that allows you to see up to 33 feet in complete darkness. Just click on the link in the info box below to check out the camera yourself. Ben and I are super happy with it. It's really affordable. And of course you can use it for lots of different purposes besides just watching your pets. Many people also use it to watch their kids or elderly, for example, or simply to secure their property. Okay, so we've talked about the things that are different in public, but what does a dog's life look like at home? One major difference that I noticed immediately was that Americans don't seem to walk their dogs as often as Germans do. In Germany, when you have a dog, the general rule is that you have to take your dog on walks at least twice a day so that they can use the bathroom, but also to get proper exercise. Walking your dog in German is called Gassi game, by the way. Thought I'd mention that since it's pretty unique going gussy. You don't use that term in any other context in German. And this isn't only a societal expectation towards dog owners in Germany. There's even a nationwide regulation, the Tierschutz Hundeverordnung, that actually requires dog owners to let their dogs spend sufficient time outside. In the US, at least in my observation, a lot of people just let their dogs go outside into the yard or just take them across the street a few times a day to use the bathroom. Which I'm sure partly goes back to the fact that a lot of dog owners here do have land where they can let their dogs run around outside. But I feel like even people who can't provide that to their dogs don't religiously go on those two walks per day the same way Germans do. At least here in Cincinnati, I don't think I know anyone who does that. And I don't really see anyone do that in my neighborhood. Well, rarely, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what your experience with this is. Now, remember the German dog regulation I just mentioned? Well, surprise, but it contains much more than just the rule about dogs going outside. I mean, would it even be Germany if not every last part of life was regulated? It also requires for dog owners to spend time with their dogs several times a day, or alternatively make other arrangements for the dog to have human interaction. The dog also needs to have regular contact with other dogs. And the regulation says that dogs can't be kept in a room or a container that's smaller than six square meters, so 65 square feet, which actually brings me to something that I found out about when I lived with my first roommate who had a dog. A lot of dog owners here have a crate at home where the dogs are put into when their owners aren't home or at night to sleep. They're often specifically used for puppies, but based on my research and personal experience, some people also use them for adult dogs. I've heard that it's supposed to prevent the dog from destroying anything in the house, but also protect it from getting into anything dangerous. Now, I do understand that it's a different culture here and some of you guys probably have a dog crate and your dog is just fine. But since this is a channel about my experience experiences when moving abroad and the culture shocks I had, this is definitely something that I've always found pretty cruel. That's just the way I was socialized, I think. I don't think I've ever seen anyone keep their dog in a crate in Germany, even though according to the internet, it seems to be becoming more common there as well. But as I said, Germany does have that regulation that says that dogs have to have at least six to 10 square meters of space in a container, depending on the size of the dog, which is definitely bigger than something like this. I'm not sure if more people in Germany would use a crate if these regulations didn't exist though. I feel like that's where the dog training comes into play. But the German government doesn't only chime in to protect dogs, it has demands as well. Because in Germany, dog owners actually have to pay a dog tax. So you're obligated to register your dog with the authorities and then pay a yearly tax to your local municipality. The exact amount depends on where in Germany you live and how many dogs you have, but it can range from 20 to about 350 euros per dog. Your second and third dog will be taxed higher than your first one. And if you have a dog breed that's classified as particularly dangerous, such as pit bulls or bull terriers, your tax can even be over 800 euros per year. And nope, there is no cash cat tax in Germany. This one just applies to dogs. The part that I find kind of cute personally is that after you've paid that, you'll get a little tax tag that your dog needs to wear on his collar to show that he's been a good dog and paid his taxes or that you were so kind to pay them for him. And some regions in Germany even require you to have a liability insurance for your dog. But if we're being honest, most dog owners in Germany have that anyway because Germans love insurance and hate risk. And that brings me back to what I said at the beginning, that when I still lived in Munich, 
I didn't really know anyone around the age of 20 who had their own dog, especially not while attending university. Family dogs, yes, but a dog that lives in the shared flat with a 20 year old, not really. I don't think that's very common. And I think that on the one hand, it probably has to do with the lack of space that I mentioned. American college students that live off campus, so not in a small shared dorm room, tend to have more space than your typical student in Germany. Even if they live with roommates, like I did for years, and only have one room to themselves, the average American bedroom is usually bigger than your average German bedroom. And on the other hand, I think it has to do with the fact that getting a dog is considered a pretty big step in Germany and a huge responsibility. Factors such as the high societal expectations, legal regulations, and financial responsibilities probably contribute to that. I feel like most Germans don't really think about getting a dog until until they've somewhat settled down and have a permanent job, know that they'll be staying at the same place for a while, find an apartment that is dog friendly, and figure out how to take care of the dog while they're at work. Many German dog owners have family members, friends, or professional pet sitters help take care of the dog if they can't be home with them for a longer period of time. But based on my observations, it's not quite as common in Germany to leave your dog home alone for eight plus hours at a time. Of course, having a dog is considered a big responsibility in the US as well well, but I feel like the expectations are just a little more relaxed in that regard and people often live a little bit more in the moment. So if it feels right to them to get a dog at the age of 19, they will. But what do you guys think? As you know, I don't actually have a dog myself and I never had one in Germany either, but I'm sure many of you guys do. So please share your experiences and opinions about this topic in the comments below. I hope you guys found this video interesting. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for free. And if you want to support me beyond that, you can do that by sending me a little tip down below. I really appreciate it. By the way, in case you're wondering how cats are kept differently in Germany and the US, make sure to check out this video. And with that, I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss!